Hey everyone, Dan here. Before you get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. And keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are on Sunday, January 28th. We're going to take a look at SoFi today. So SoFi has earnings coming up, and I thought we would take a look and see levels where it might flow to, where it might catch some support or resistance if it does have an outsized reaction. Now, if you look here, we have the last five earnings in blocks, and this is just to illustrate, um, you know, you can see the reaction here where you get an initial reaction and then you get uh, <laughs> a follow-through reaction, if you will, right? Big jump up here and then retrace, at least not down, back to the lows. Then here, a big push down and then scoops up and then, you know, goes on a run up into these earnings and then loses a bunch of those gains and into these earnings, then loses it a bit more and then recovers. And now here we are. So, I'm going to get rid of these just so that they don't clutter up the chart. And we're going to put in some levels below in case SoFi does uh, turn downward based on the earnings. I'm going to get rid of this as well. It's relevant at this point. We do have a gap up here still, right? So if it does run, um, that'd be something that I would look for it. Not necessarily, you know, to get right in there, but... Um, to, if you know if it's running toward it uh, it could come into play at some point depending on where it runs to now if it does start to jump up that 791 is the first level i have if it is really jumping i would imagine that would be an easy one to get through that should then you know punch it over the eight dollar level um if it's really running then we have this like mid eight as the next resistance level that that i see that's really strong there's one here a bit over eight around 810 813 but i think between that like 10 cents over eight and 10 cents below eight, which is this like 791, you know, you just basically there, you have that zone of that psychological $8 challenge. So that will certainly be a thing, but it'll be sort of encompassed in that 791. And then, yeah, we'll see if it can take 847, you know, does it get any motion up toward this gap? This gap actually um, kicks off at 903. So we have this 911 level in here just because that is also a support level. So it's hard to put too many in and clutter things up too much. Now today, our low came in at 752. The high on this day was 750. And so we do still have a teeny tiny gap right here. Um, probably too sort of imperceivable to even put in. So I'm not going to do that. But, um, but let's scroll left and we'll put in some levels that if it does start to head south they might come into play for us so 739 um yes that's pretty close in so we can start with that one uh what do we have back here this for sure where do we want this that's good to me 638 now let's see motion down around here 576 and then this is the last one I'll put in yeah right around 525 I'm trying to see if there's something in between here that could be worth putting in and you know if it heads one direction or the other um, we can get rid of because now we have so many levels in here <laughs> I've been trying to be better about not cluttering up the chart but you know if it runs up we'll get rid of you know these levels to the downside so that they don't show up anymore and if it runs down then we will uh, get rid of some of these to the upside so that it's not just cluttering the chart. But I mean, we have a plot, um, we have a course plotted all the way up to 1170 here. Um, I don't know if that's the upper, upper level we have, but um, it looks like it. Um, and so, you know, we're covering a big range here. We're covering basically from 525 to the downside to 1170 to the upside and all of these levels in between, including this gap here like i said so we'll see how the reaction comes and um, if there are fireworks or not um, it seems to often be the case that there's strong reactions to earnings also you know so if i can tend to have strong reactions to analyst upgrades downgrades lower higher price targets that sort of thing and so that 
you know, may sort of surround the earnings date as well and add additional fuel to the fire. Now on the think or swim side of things, um, if we take a look at where it's situated. So, you know, folks haven't really run up the price into this earnings, that's for sure. You know, we had this big gap down here that drew the stock um, back through the channel from being pushed up out of the upper bound of the channel and then, you know, fell through and is just sort of retracing its way back in. So it's, you know, it's not obviously the lowest that it's ever been. Um, it's not near recent highs, at least percentage wise, it's sort of situated in the middle. So to me, it's kind of at a middle ground. It's around that battle area around the $8-ish range. You know, it's, I know it feels kind of far away from there at the moment, but, um, you know, I still feel like if it does, certainly if it pushes up, it's very much back in the battle for eight. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's kind of mid range just feeling to me. It doesn't feel like it was run up a lot. It doesn't feel like it was punished a lot heading into earnings. So, um, I'm hoping that this reaction to earnings is just sort of relatively on point. Whereas, you know, sometimes when you run up into an earnings, even if the earnings themselves are actually good, the feeling that a bunch of this was already priced in and maybe we ran it up too much into earnings. And so then even on a good earnings call, it can draw down. And similarly, you know, it gets punished headed into earnings, um, you know, like this, uh, I guess down here maybe or down here. And then even maybe on sort of a lackluster call, I'm not saying that this is exactly that this earnings call was lackluster and the other one was great or anything like that. But just as an example, you know, even on a lackluster call, folks could say, you know, this stock has still sort of been beaten up. It doesn't deserve to be down here, even though the earnings call wasn't superb. Um, you know, I, I think this is a good buying opportunity and folks can buy in and push the stock up even on what would otherwise seem like you know, not a superb uh, earnings call, and it can come down on what would otherwise be seen as a strong earnings call. So kind of feel like we're mid-range of that for now. So again, I'm just hoping that the, re the reaction to this seems to make sense. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I mean, it always seems to unleash this slew of volatility, and that persists for weeks. And so we'll see, you know, what all that aftermath brings as well, and, and how quickly it regains or retraces from the losses or the gains that it makes based off of the reaction to earnings. All right, folks, I hope that you have had a good weekend. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video.